I mean, let's be clear, right? What we're seeing right now with regards to these incidents that we're seeing in Merseyside right now with the protests that have been done about asylum seekers, these things would not have happened were the Conservative Party in a position to try and exploit culture war divisions to try and maintain power. As I've said plenty of times on this channel, we have um, a Conservative Party who has only ever been elected uh, by relying on their position as being the party of a sound economy. And they continually use that line to try and win elections over and over and over again. And they've consistently run with that narrative and it's been very successful for them. Yet we're in a situation currently where the Conservative Party have screwed up the economy. They elected Liz Truss as leader and she fucked everything up. So they no longer have those same economic credentials, the same fiscal credentials that would theoretically put them into power. So what's going to happen now? The only option that they have left is to try and, try and stoke divisions elsewhere, kick up the culture war, try and turn to other issues, uh, make people try and think about anything that isn't economics. During times of economic stress and economic uncertainty, economic woes that we're seeing right now with the cost of living crisis, this is a ripe time for scapegoating, right? This is why we see these big plays with stopping using Section 35 on the gender reform bill, trying to turn trans people into the culture war wedge issue du jour, trying to push people apart on these issues. This is why when they were looking at five, five pledges about things they were going to do, they chose four things that made sense and applied to everybody, and they randomly included stop the boats as being this massive, you know, issue that is across the country is going to be important and why Suella Bravman is using racially charged language such as calling people's invaders because they want to kick this stuff up this reaction that we're seeing right now where we're seeing people protesting so much that they are setting fire to police cars over this issue specifically rioting outside a hotel containing asylum seekers chanting what was it send them back or something i think it was or send them home because of the as what is and this tweet here the dangerous scapegoating of refugees this plays exactly into their hands instead of continual discussions about all of the different scandals that are happening within within the conservative party the, their failures on the economy the remainder of the the fact that people's lives are continually getting worse every single year how pay is not is going down, the, the inflationary pressures are still pretty high currently. They need to find any reason to try and get people talking about anything else. And this is the exact result of these this rhetoric that they're engaging in. That's why we saw a asylum seeker processing centre in Dover being firebombed by a far-right activist. This is why we're getting the far-right protesting and setting fire to police cars is a direct result of the incendiary rhetoric that's being employed by the Conservatives. And they are deliberately doing this. They're deliberately doing this. It's so cynical. It's uh, And it's... And the fact that we don't have any proper opposition to this either, in that the Labour Party at the same time will be criticising things like the obvious cultural or racist stuff that they're doing, and they'll call it inefficient or unworkable rather than calling it out for you know, the morally indefensible shit that it is. And we have a government that's engaging in stochastic terrorism. It's so dangerous. And it's a direct result of a conservative party that genuinely, genuinely does not care about the people in this country and will do literally anything and will say anything to try and get elect elected at the next general election. It's Vladislav Surkov all over again. Remember when um, there was a t when Dominic Cummings was still the um, was still the, the kind of the spin doctor for Boris Johnson as his uh, advisor. And was saying, he was literally saying, and we have record of this saying, that he advised Boris Johnson specifically to hype up the rhetoric around trans issues to use it as an electoral wedge issue. We have a, a corrupted and sick political culture in this country where politicians will cynically use and weaponize minorities to scaremonger about them, to whip up the frenzy of majority people in this country. And this is why we see things like this happening. It's why we're seeing people, anti-trans protesters, literally quoting Mein Kampf on, in the middle of the street. 
And you're absolutely right, Myra Rand. There also there's plenty of conspiracy narrative that's going on within right wing circles uh, in far as anti Semitism is concerned. Suella Bravman, the same person who made the stochastic terrorist comments that led to the firebombing of the migrant detention center that has contributed to the rhetoric that has led to the scenes that we're seeing tonight. She is the same person who's talking about cultural Marxism. It's the same side of the political aisle that keeps scaremongering about globalists, quote unquote. The rise of people like Ye West saying the things that he has been saying about Jewish people. It's all the same things that you'll see every single time. Every time that there is some kind of economic woes that's going on in this country, people will want to find somebody to blame. And the right wing are very easy at finding a scapegoat and then blaming them for the issues. And this is what this is the result. And this is only going to get worse. And the same uh, targeting queer people in general, the same the groomer panic that we're getting over and over and over again. Divide and conquer is the name of the game as far as these people are concerned. They know that we are seeing, that they're seeing huge amounts of support for things like union activity. There is wide scale support for a move away from the neoliberal consensus of the past 40 years. And they know that they they cannot be some level of class solidarity. So they have to find some kind of dividing line, whether it be people's opinions on certain social issues around minorities, whether it being around wedge issues like asylum seekers, for example. And we know, we know the the asylum seeker issues that we're seeing is completely manufactured by the government. It's manufactured by the government because they're the ones who have cut all of the, the provision for processing asylum seekers when this time 20 years ago we were processing double the amount without a backlog. Whilst the, the current issues we have is a massive backlog, we know that they don't want to get people processed for asylum claims in France because they refuse to negotiate with the French government to be able to set that up. We know that people are being forced to come over by small boat because the government refuses to open safe and legal routes for anyone who's not from Afghanistan or from Ukraine. We know this because when questioned in the Parliamentary Select Committee, the Home Affairs Parliamentary Select Committee, when asked what a legal route was for someone coming to the UK from a country that wasn't from Afghanistan or Ukraine, what method they would have to go through to be able to claim asylum in the legal, the legal manner that these people say they want these people to come through and do, she couldn't answer the question because these legal routes don't exist. And yeah, Mithril, you're 100% right. Braveman is a fascist. This is a dangerous government full of dangerous people, desperate to cling on to power and saying whatever they want to try and get that power. And this is the problem. This is the, one of the big problems that we have in this country. And uh, I'm increasingly increasingly worried about the direction that this country is going in.